So uh, over to uh, John Wadeson from uh, uh, John Wadeson from Ag Anglia Farmers, who is going to tell us all about the opportunities for farmers and solar. John. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as uh, I've been introduced, uh, I'm from the AF group, uh, formerly called Anglia Farmers. Um, I'm here with a team of other AF specialists and experts uh, that are looking to introduce new members and new farmers to what we can offer at Anglia Farmers. Um, the uh, predominant reason I'm here is that I'm the renewable project specialist for AF and I've been involved in a number of projects for uh, James and PX Farms. So the solar panels that you can see over in the field to my right are the latest ground array that's been installed. Um, the original ground array is behind us and James's original uh, foray into uh, solar PV was the uh, tracking systems that are behind the Chaffin's van. Now, Solar PV has become very, very popular within farming over the last 10 to 15 years, and uh, AF has been involved in many hundreds of projects for its members. Now, AF predominantly uh, uh, works in procurement of farming resources and farming inputs, so solar PV has become something that, uh, that we've used as, a, as an add-on to that. Solar PV at PX Farms, the uh, array that you can see behind, the tracking array, is, uh, is approximately 50 kilowatts, about 10 kilowatts per column. Now, that was installed about 12 years ago, something like that. The array behind me was installed about 10 years ago. That was all within the FIT era. So those were paid for by government subsidies. More recently, the government has been reluctant to pay for subsidies, but the modern solar PV systems do actually pay for themselves. So yeah, most installations now, if you have a decent sized array for a decent sized power supply, you can get them to pay back relatively quickly. Um, the projections for the array in the field over here, the latest array, is about a four year payback. So one of the things that, uh, that James specified at the start of the project was that he wanted to the whole project to be as cash neutral as possible. So we worked with him uh, very diligently in a number of uh, financing suppliers to try and get him a financing package that actually made it cash positive from day one. And we managed to do that. Uh, so whilst in its own right it will pay back in four years, James has financed it over a slightly longer period, meaning that he's never out of pocket on that particular array. Now, if you look over the top of the trees at the end of the path, you will see the top of a building between the trees. Now, that building has a roof array which was installed over the last few weeks. Uh, that roof array is also augmented by a number of battery systems, and those panels are actually powering all of the office and ma machinery workshop and some of the grain stores down that end of the facility. Now, again, we were looking at the, uh, um, the figures for that earlier today, and uh, it seems to be generating enough power to uh, power the whole site down there uh, around the clock at the moment. Now, in the winter time, there will be some import from the grid, but uh, during the summer, spring and autumn, it should be pretty self-sufficient. The arrays that you can see around me uh, total about 350 kilowatts. Now that's a bit of a drop in the ocean with regard to the amount of power that the grain stores that over behind you are using. Uh, but the arrays have contributed about 40,000 pounds in the last 12 months. Uh, so from that perspective, it's, uh, it, it's, it's actually quite a, a reasonable earner uh, for, for as an auxiliary for a farming business. Now I'm just going to... Uh, um, do a couple, uh, couple more things about uh, AF. Um, for those of you that don't know, AF is the largest farming procurement organization within the UK. We are a cooperative, uh, so we are owned by our farming members. Uh, we are specifically orientated towards producing value for farming inputs, uh, and we have specialists within fuel, energy, fertilizer, crops, and I would, if you're not an AF member at the moment, I would advise you to pop down to the tent at the bottom of the track there 
and have a chat with the team. Uh, my colleague Paul in the middle here uh, is, is our man who deals with uh, new members. So uh, certainly have a chat with him if you're interested in looking at any of the, the farming procurement options. Can I have a show of hands of uh, anyone that's got solar PV installed at the moment? <laughs> I've got a reluctant show of hands, but uh, that, that's, quite, that's quite a blank sheet to be fair. So I, I'm guessing all of you guys are here at the moment because you're interested in solar. Well, I'd add to what my, uh, uh, my friends at Chaffin said uh, at, at the start, and that's that solar PV has never been cheaper. Uh, it's probably the best solution for reducing your energy bills on farm. Uh, it doesn't produce around the clock power like a wind turbine, but neither does it have all of the costs associated with the preventative maintenance and upkeep. So it's the most fit and forget renewable energy solution that you can buy currently. Now, solar panels have never been as cheap as they currently are, and battery systems have never been as cheap as they currently are either. So it's worth looking at now, and uh, again, if, uh, uh, if you want to speak to Paul, uh, he will uh, be able to uh, introduce you to the ways in which we can help you to correctly size and finance a solar PV system to suit your farming needs. I'm going to uh, open up the floor now to a few questions. Um, any questions from, uh, from anyone regarding new arrays? Uh, any questions from anyone that uh, would like to install something? Tracking arrays are phenomenally good. Uh, the, the, the primary issue with tracking arrays is they have a number of moving parts. Now, those moving parts, as you can see, sometimes get a bit confused. You can see the arrays that we've got here. Uh, they are looking in different directions, so they are generating different quantities of power. Typically, a tracking array should be 20 to 25% more efficient than a ground array or a reef array. However, they need to be working and looking in the right direction. So um, it, it's the same with, the, uh, with wind turbines. Um, it's that preventative maintenance and that upkeep that causes a tracker to be slightly less of a beneficial resource than uh, you would get with a more traditional array. So they do cost quite a lot more as well. So cost is often prohibitive when it comes to trackers. Whilst they only produce about 20, 25% more energy, they probably cost three times what you would pay for a, a traditional ground array. So no, I've seen that. That's, uh, that's a solution that's actually been around for many years um, in, in terms of utilizing solar PV as fencing panels. Uh, not particularly in this country. has never been popular here. Uh, it's, it's certainly something that, uh, that is becoming more viable. Uh, solar panels are cheaper than fence panels at the moment. So, so why would you not? You know, it's a, it's, it's a very good solution. I think um, the way in which it needs to be installed um, needs to be in, in line with the, the current legislation and the requirements of, uh, um, of, of the solar PV regulations. So um, I don't know of anybody in the UK doing it currently, but there are lots and lots of organizations in Europe that are using solar PV as fencing panels. You do get, a f uh, you get, do get an efficiency D rate by having the panels vertically. Um, the ideal angle for a panel in the UK is about 35 degrees. Uh, that will generate you the maximum for, for every square meter of panel that you're using. Now, if, you, if you're mounting them either horizontally or vertically, that will derate to about 80%. So you will lose 20% of the efficiency of the panel by doing that. But it's still great. When the panels are that cheap, why not? So does anybody in the audience use any other kind of renewable technology? What about wind turbines? Anyone got wind turbines? AD plant? Oh, we're drawing a bit of a blank here. What, what I'm seeing here is that we've, we've got a lot of customers potentially for uh, renewable energy that are uh, <laughs> looking very, very good for, uh, for becoming new members of AF. Um, more than happy to discuss that with you. Um, as I say, speak to Paul or come see me afterwards. The panels that you've got here, uh, these are about 250 watts. Now, that's what you would have installed about 10 years ago. When you were buying those panels 10 years ago, they would have been about probably 250 to 300 pounds each. Now, the panels that are in the field across here 
Instead of 250 watts, the modern panels are between 400 and 450 watts. They are slightly bigger, but those panels tend to be about 50 pounds each. So you can see you, you've, you've almost doubled the power rating of the panel, and you've reduced its price by about four or five times. So they are as cheap as they've ever been. Now, there, there, is, a, there is a reason for that. Um, the manufacturers, uh, are they tend to predominantly be in China. Um, and the, uh, the panel markets have been up and down throughout the world over the last few years. And uh, yeah, at the moment, uh, solar PV panel market has geared up for an enormous amount of manufacture. And that manufacture means that because it's a supply and demand market, the areas that are demanding it are demanding cheaper panels, um, and the technology is developing to achieve that. So whilst I can't see the panels coming down dramatically from where they are now, and I, I can't really can't see how they can make them any cheaper, but yeah, the, the guys in China are very, very good at, uh, yeah. Uh, uh they are, yes. The, the panels that you put in a field are exactly the same as the ones you would put on a roof. It's just the mounting system that changes. Sorry, sir. Battery efficiency, uh, battery efficiency is very good. Battery cost has come down dramatically. Um, with batteries, it's very, very important, like with solar, to design your system to suit your needs. Now, we've looked at this system for James, and we've looked at. Uh, um, how much benefit he would see from installing a large battery array on this site here, which is predominantly powering the grain stores. Uh, now, the actual way in which the batteries work and yeah, the, the way in which he uses his power, it's actually not that efficient to do it that way. However, if you look at domestic applications or if you have an office or if, if you have a, an organization that, um, uh, that tends to run more business hours, um, or a home, then batteries are very, very efficient and they can be used to maximize the benefit from an array. Now, the difficulty with a battery is that when you're selling your power back to the grid, you'll be paying about 22 pence, 25 pence a unit to buy your power from the grid. When you sell your power back to the grid, you might be selling it back at 10 or 12 pence. Now, that 10 pence is what you're targeting with a battery. And you need to be able to store it and then reutilize that at a different time and make that pay off. And batteries are still quite expensive. Whilst they are cheaper than they've ever been, you have to make sure you can maximize that overlap. And that's something that we spend a lot of time doing with our members at AF, uh, making sure that when they're talking to suppliers about battery and solar systems, they're actually getting a verified performance before they put their money up? That's actually a really good question. Um, the, the panels are as cheap as they've ever been at the moment, uh, but the gentleman has identified that there's a lot more than just panels within a solar array. You've got to look at the mounting packages, you've got to look at the installation, you've got to look at the electrical infrastructure, maybe connecting to the grid. Um, all of that comes with a cost. Now, those costs haven't reduced as much as the panel price has. So the panel price is the driving factor in terms of getting the, the cost of the solar arrays down. However, solar arrays as total have probably reduced by about 60% in the last five years in terms of the, their actual total cost. You still have cost of scaffolding. You still have cost of netting on a building like this. If you have a cement fiber roof, uh, you have cost of electrical installation. Um, so those things have not reduced at the same level as the panels. Uh, and again, that's one of the reasons why uh, AF spends a lot of its time advising its members about what they should expect to be paying for the solar PV that they're installing. Does that answer your question, sir? Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you very much indeed, John.